God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad. I'm the right one with some lights, son, hold me up, I do not care. I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap. I'm raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass. God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad. I'm the right one with some lights, son, hold me up, I do not care. I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap. I'm raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass. Yeah. Will you not? Will you pass on what you got? When you pass on, does it stop? Or when you pass on, does it start? Yeah, those are the questions I'm asking. We live in the present, we look to the future, but we always refer to the past tense. Yeah, if I go make a million today, I wonder if that would be the reason why I got a big smile on my face. But I know yeah. that it would never last, I know that it would be a couple of days. What is it profit a man to gain the whole world as he's walking his path and turns around and realize that he just went the wrong way? I'm the right one with some lights, son, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap I'm Raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some lights, son, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap I'm Raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass yeah. God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad. I'm the right one with some lights, son, hold me up, I do not care. I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap. I'm raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass. God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad. I'm the right one with some lights, son, hold me up, I do not care. I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap. I'm raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass. Yeah. Yeah. Or will you not? Will you pass on what you got? When you pass on, does it stop? Or when you pass on, does it start? Yeah, those are the questions I'm asking. We live in the present, we look to the future, but we always refer to the past tense. Yeah, if I go make a million today, I wonder if that would be the reason why I got a big smile on my face. But I know yeah. that it will never last. I know that it will be a couple of days. What is it profit a man to gain the whole world as he's walking his path and turns around and realizes that he just went the wrong way? I'm the right one with some lights, son, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap I'm Raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some lights, son, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap I'm Raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass Yeah God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad. I'm the right one with some lights, son, hold me up, I do not care. I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap. I'm raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass. God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad. I'm the right one with some lights, son, hold me up, I do not care. I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap. I'm raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass. Yeah. So will you not? Will you pass on what you got? When you pass on, does it stop? Or when you pass on, does it start? Yeah, those are the questions I'm asking. We live in the present, we look to the future.
future, but we always refer to the past tense. Yeah, if I go make a million today, I wonder if that would be the reason why I got a big smile on my face. But I know yeah. that it would never last. I know that it would be a couple of days. What is it profit a man to gain the whole world as he's walking his path and turns around and realize that he just went the wrong way? I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass yeah. God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass Yeah, yeah Pass on, will you not? When you pass on what you got? When you pass on, does it stop? And when you pass on, does it start? Yeah, uh, those are the questions I'm asking. We live in the present, we look to the future, but we always refer to the past tense. Yeah, if I go make a million today, I wonder if that would be the reason why I got a big smile on my face. But I know yeah. that it would never last. I know that it would be a couple of days. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world as he's walking his path and turns around and realizes that he just went the wrong way? I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass yeah. God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass Yeah, yeah Pass on, will you not? When you pass on what you got? When you pass on, does it stop? And when you pass on, does it start? Yeah, uh, those are the questions I'm asking. We live in the present, we look to the future, but we always refer to the past tense. Yeah, if I go make a million today, I wonder if that would be the reason why I got a big smile on my face. But I know yeah. that it would never last. I know that it would be a couple of days. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world as he's walking his path and turns around and realizes that he just went the wrong way? I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass yeah.
God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun Hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together They call rap Raising my hands up in class Life is a test when you pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun Hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together They call rap Raising my hands up in class Life is a test when you pass Yeah Those are the questions I'm asking We live in the present, we look to the future But we always refer to the past and Yeah, if I go make a milli today I wonder if that would be the reason why I got a big smile on my face But I know yeah. that it will never last I know that it will be a couple of days what does it profit a man To gain the whole world as he's walking his path He turns around and realize that he just went the wrong way I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass yeah. God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass Yeah, yeah Will you not? When you pass on what you got When you pass on, does it stop? And when you pass on, does it start? Yeah, those are the questions I'm asking We live in the present, we live to the future But we always refer to the past And yeah, if I go make a million today I wonder if that would be the reason why I got a big smile on my face But I know yeah. that it will never last I know that it will be a couple of days What does it profit a man to gain the whole world As he's walking his path and turns around And realize that he just went the wrong way I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass yeah. God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass Yeah, yeah Will you not? Will you pass on what you got? When you pass on, does it stop? And when you pass
last song does it start? Yeah, those are the questions I'm asking. We live in the present, we look to the future, but we always refer to the past tense. Yeah, if I go make a million today, I wonder if that would be the reason why I got a big smile on my face. But I know yeah. that it will never last, I know that it will be a couple of days. What is it profit a man to gain the whole world as he's walking his path and turns around and realize that he just went the wrong way? I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass yeah. God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass Yeah, yeah Pass on, will you not? When you pass on what you got? When you pass on, does it stop? And when you pass on, does it start? Yeah, uh, those are the questions I'm asking. We live in the present, we look to the future, but we always refer to the past tense. Yeah, if I go make a million today, I wonder if that would be the reason why I got a big smile on my face. But I know yeah. that it will never last. I know that it will be a couple of days. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world as he's walking his path and turns around and realizes that he just went the wrong way? I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass yeah. God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass Yeah, yeah Pass on, will you not? When you pass on what you got? When you pass on, does it stop? And when you pass on, does it start? Yeah, those are the questions I'm asking. We live in the present, we look to the future, but we always refer to the past tense. Yeah, if I go make a million today, I wonder if that would be the reason why I got a big smile on my face. But I know yeah. that it will never last. I know that it will be a couple of days. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world as he's walking his path and turns around and realizes that he just went the wrong way? I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass yeah.
God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun Hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together They call rap Raising my hands up in class Life is a test where you pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun Hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together They call rap Raising my hands up in class Life is a test where you pass Yeah, yeah or will you not? When you pass on what you got When you pass on, does it stop? And when you pass on, does it start? Yeah, uh, those are the questions I'm asking We live in the present, we look to the future But we always refer to the past and Yeah, if I go make a milli today I wonder if that would be the reason why I got a big smile on my face But I know yeah. that it will never last I know that it will be a couple of days Cause what is it profit a man To gain the whole world as he's walking his path And turns around and realize that he just went the wrong way I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass yeah. God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass Yeah, yeah Pass on, will you not? Will you pass on what you got? When you pass on, does it stop? And when you pass on, does it start? Yeah, those are the questions I'm asking. We live in the present, we look to the future, but we always refer to the past. And yeah, if I go make a million today, I wonder if that would be the reason why I got a big smile on my face. But I know yeah. that it will never last. I know that it will be a couple of days. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world as he's walking his path and turns around and realize that he just went the wrong way? I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test where you pass yeah. Perfect. Hey, God bless you. Thank you all for your patience. I love you deeply. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for liking all of that good stuff. Listen, if you can hear me well, let me adjust this some. Um, go ahead and put a thumbs up in the chat. Let me shout you out, show you some love, and then we'll get started. Obviously, I'm not sure. Uh, Allah, I love you. Good evening. Kevin, what's good? Quentin, I love you. Dr. Adrian, can't wait to see you shortly. Carl, the prophetic psalmist, love you. Julie says she's taking her seat. <laughs> Fred, it's good to see you with your correct name. Hey, Marissa. Fine as well. Joe, bless you. Fine as well. Let me just adjust it on my rabbit and turn it up. 
Hey, mommy, love you. Diamond, what's good? I always end up trying to wait a few people out to see if they drop off, but they end up timing me and coming back. <laughs> Sister Gloria said, Mike Sanga, hey, Olushu, I love you, patience. You and Chris, give Chris my love and my regards. Steve Gray, bless you. saw Kevin <laughs> and then she was about to be tracking it was going to get to the point where people were like hey let me see your YouTube history <laughs> just, just help people be free hey man well look well, I'm, I'm excited to be with you all as always it's always a pleasure to be in the house of God it's always a pleasure to serve the people of God I was telling someone I said um, who was I speaking to was it Sean or Jazz I was speaking to someone and they were they were really grateful I had unlocked some things for them. And they were, you know, they were trying to express their gratitude. And I in turn told them thank you and they were taken back. And I said, Well, without you I have no purpose. Mm-hmm. A prophet has no purpose without God's people. Mm-hmm. Although I like being alone. <laughs> <laughs> However, it's without people it, it's ineffective. So I, they were taken back by that. And I said, No, you can only be effective if someone partakes of your fruit. If not, the tree breaks. A tree bearing much fruit isn't beautiful unless someone partakes of it. So God plants you and then he increases you and you grow and you become fruitful. Yet if no one ever partakes of it, you run a risk of breaking the tree. So sometimes you can't even hold yourself up when you begin to bear fruit unless God brings other people to you so they can partake of it. So that's a big part of bearing fruit. Fruit is not to be bare just to look at. Remember I told you, I said, even when it comes to tasting or testing fruit, most people don't know what that means. Because in order to test it, you have to partake of it. You can't stand at an apple tree and gauge and test it whether it's good or not. You have to partake of it. And so I'm, um, I'm grateful to each one of you. You said we start off deep. No, we're just getting started. But um, I'm grateful to each one of you because I fulfill my purpose when the burden gets lifted because the weight gets lifted when I can give and share. Mm-hmm. And not give and share like, oh, everything you teach, but no meaning the individualized when you help a person one-on-one that right there <laughs> y'all see justin we got to empty you back out so we could <laughs> we just pray for the man of god because he just poured out <laughs> y'all know i taught y'all about that i'm not mad at people for saying that but that's just not the way it works spiritually it's never that you empty out and you pour back you see what i'm saying even when Jesus said virtue left me, he never said he was empty. He just said virtue left me. You see what I'm saying? We gather things because we minister from the flesh and not from the spirit. Anybody on the side of the spirit knows that you don't what you give, you don't lose. I give it because it's mine to give. I don't I don't not retain it because I give it. You see what I'm saying? Yes. When Elijah gave Elisha his mantle, he was still Elijah. He gave Elijah his he gave Elisha, excuse me, his mantle. He was still the senior prophet. He just was no longer dwelling in the realm of men. We know he was still senior prophet because he will be back with Enoch. This is good. The two prophets. So, yeah. <laughs> you crazy? Never mind. Yeah, but um, yeah. So those things, and and that's we're gonna talk about the tree of life tonight, obviously, and what I'm gonna try to do. But obviously, I don't. I never proved to be too successful at that. I'm going to try to honor the timer tonight. <laughs> it's just because we're going to have church in, in, a, in a day or two. What happened was I mixed my schedule up for yesterday and had had that wrong. So I thought we were going to do it yesterday and we didn't. Okay. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, so even in that, I've always said it before, it takes spiritual men to teach spiritual things. So when you start talking about things like the tree of life, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that ain't a Sunday school teacher. 
that ain't that ain't a pastor's teaching. That's that's something that's something that someone has to encounter to teach it. And you don't encounter through study, you encounter through a person. Mm-hmm. Men unlock things to men. Beings unlock things to men, but you don't encounter it through I mean you could crack this Bible up, it's one of my favorite Bibles. It's all kind of wonderful things in there. And even in those wonderful things, almost ninety nine percent of it is wrong concerning the spiritual matters of tree of life. Mm-hmm. And I choice men of God have contributed into that. Choice men of God have contributed into that. I was considering it one of the men of God who's contributed some portions, I won't say his name, and to it is under, um, I don't want to say attack, but what would the word be, babe? I don't know what the word would be, but either way, he under some pressure. Let's just say it like that. He under some, some pressure. Not in persecution, yeah. but he under some pressure. And whether the pressure is right or wrong, what will happen is most times people want to discount a man and all of his work based upon his fallings and his failures. But you won't dare throw this Bible away if it founds out that he did fall. You won't dare throw the Bible away if you found out it's true, the things that they're saying about him. You wouldn't dare. But the person sitting right in your face, you'll throw them away. The person you don't have a relationship with, who you've never seen, who you do not know, you hold them dear to your heart. You don't know Elijah. You don't know Elijah. You clearly don't know Jesus. <laughs> you understand? So it's something to consider. Don't be so easy to disregard people. Don't be so easy to disregard people. People have to be held accountable. All those things also. But I thought about that in light of um, with T.P. Joshua and the BBC documentary and all the stuff. Felicia obviously spoke about it some weeks ago but all of the stuff surrounding it. So even if it was true, mm-hmm. even if it was true, mm-hmm. which I believe it's not, mm-hmm. but even if it was, where are all the men of God speaking about him? Oh. The world doesn't get, get to declare the church wrong. Right. Mm-hmm. That's not how it works. We haven't seen one man of God come out and stand against him. Say, hey man, this was wrong, this was wrong. We tried to bring the task about this. You haven't seen one. So it just goes to show you how flawed we are and how we approach things, right? And even if he did mess up, you will be shamed to find out that T.B. Jock, okay, let me not say what I was going to say. You will be shocked to find out how God feels about him. Let's just, let's just phrase it that way. You'll be shocked to find out how God feels about him. You'll be shocked to find out. So the thing is, don't speak about stuff you don't know. And don't lend ear to people speaking about things that they do not know. You see what I'm saying? The world has never been the dictator of how the church should function, how the church should operate. So the news media outlet hate your God, yet they've created a documentary about someone, and yet now all of a sudden we're giving credibility to them. What you say? Yeah. I love you too, James. So it just, th- these things are just things that I just want you to consider and just, just keep in light of that. Now, um, after we're getting closer to the School of Light, so we'll start fasting. I've already started, but we'll start, you know, corporate together. We'll start fasting, and that'll be, um, that'll be a good time to help us prepare. And what do we say, 14 days? Mm-hmm. So when is that? The first. So the first, which is next week? Okay, so that's next. Yeah. Yeah, one more mess of people's Valentine's Day. <laughs> Not that it matters, but. <laughs> yeah. In light of Jesus. In light of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Yeah, we don't want to mess up people's Valentine's Day. So, uh, we'll, we'll, Julie, Felicia, they'll, they'll get that all put out and we'll, we'll get started with that with God's grace. Let's go. Love you, man of God. Let's see what we got. Well, the Pingu, that's another story, okay? That was for the married folks. All right. <laughs> Amen. You got to clarify. So the singles, that they need to be fasting. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying that what I just said was for the married folks, in light of married folks. Because only married folks should do what married folks do, right? Period. Amen. Just 
See, they, they don't like that we don't talk about sin, so I just figured I'd say that. <laughs> you don't ever talk about sin. Well, how about we should move on past that? You don't ever talk about salvation. Well, <laughs> how about I already did that when I preached the gospel to him? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just, Brandon said I already got a head start. Uh, my church now. Amen. <laughs> Almost. Oh, amen, you. <laughs> oh, man. We know that sin is bad. Yeah. All right. Just want to make sure. So just so we start the night off right, because we're talking about the tree of life, and we're going to end up getting into sin. Let's go ahead and put that in there. Sin is bad. I'd have a little more energy with it, but I'm um, I'm not feeling my best. I'm not I'm not feeling 100. percent So, <laughs> y'all yeah, put it in, and then we'll get started. Hey, Dr. Adrian, the tea that you sent was I, I actually today was the first day I used the tea because I figured out how to use the the diffuser you gave me, the steeper, and it was excellent. I'm really grateful for it. I'm about to consume all your offering. Perfect. Now, because we're talking about the tree of life, remember this. Only spiritual things can be taught by experience, not by what you've read. Remember, when someone comes to you, they're never coming to you to hear you read the Bible. And if they are, they will eventually, if they're coming to a man with experience, they will grow beyond just looking for you to read the Bible. Because head knowledge doesn't bring man into experience. Oh, Angela got jokes. <laughs> it was loose leaf tea, Angela. Yes. <laughs> But head knowledge isn't what brings a man into an experience. And experience is what brings man into an experience. And so when we look at the story, and I don't want to say story, but in light of it, when you look at the account of the tree of life, right? When you look at the account of the tree of life, oftentimes it's, there's a lot of moving parts that aren't understood. And the reason they're not understood is because you had to be there to know. Remember I told you that the way God has framed the word of God is that there are gaps and there are holes inside of it where certain things just aren't laid out plainly. And those gaps and those holes can only be filled by experience. They can't be filled by study. They can't be filled by experience. Excuse me, they can't be filled by study. They can only be filled by experience. And if it's not filled by experience, it can only be filled by someone who has experience so that they can give it to you. You see what I'm saying? And so... That's why who you listen to matters. Because who you listen to determines how you see. Even when I listen to people prophesy, I can tell who they listen to. Not like, when I say who they listen to, not like, oh, you listen to this person, this teacher, this person, this preacher. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm clarifying what I'm saying is spiritually I can understand who you have been beholding. Because it shapes how you minister. So I know when someone prophesies, if the Holy Spirit has spoken to them, I know when they're prophesying. If an angel is speaking to them, I know when they're prophesying if the Lord Jesus is speaking to them. All of them have three distinct voices in how they speak. And all of them have three distinct manifestations of how they bring themselves about. But if you just listen to words, it all sounds the same. You see what I'm saying? Yes. But it's only by experience that I learned how the angel of the Lord speaks when it's time to minister. It's only by experience that I learned how the Holy Spirit speaks. It was only by experience in meeting the Lord Jesus that I understood how he speaks. So I can see others and I can perceive based upon what I have experienced. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So remember, study is not enough. You have to ask God that you may know him. Now, that doesn't mean don't read your Bible, okay? So <laughs> apparently we have to make sure we backtrack everything we say so that way people don't misunderstand it. But... You need to read your Bible, it's good. But your Bible is only to lead you to a man. Yes. You see? Your Bible is only to lead you to a man. Now, one of the things that has aided me in being able to stand ten toes down on a lot of things that others may disagree on is that when the Lord Jesus found me and he began to teach me, he taught me without this. So I could teach you about the Lord's Supper 
without the Bible. That's why I don't do it. So that's why I don't even do it like that because I understand the severity of it, the gravity of it, the nature of it. Because when he taught it to me, he taught it to me. That's how I learned about how he was crucified. You've heard me talk about how he was naked. Yes. If if you were reading according to this book, he wasn't naked. If you read the commentary in here, it would say he wasn't naked. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Does that mean I disregard this? No. A greater measure of light gives a greater level of sight. Yeah. That's a bar, ain't it? <laughs> that made me feel a little better. Greater level of sight gives a greater level of light. So the light that a man receives determine, determines how far he can see. The light that a man receives determine the depth at which he can see or the detail in which he can see. So this is like, hey, everyone can see that. However, as more light enters you, you can see the things that aren't plainly revealed to everyone else. Does that make sense? Yes. Remember, that's what revelation is, to be revealed or to unveil. I was talking with someone and it was like, yeah, man, when you made that statement about darkness, you know, it kind of like, you know, because then, you know, it says in God there's no evil. And no dark. I was like, well, one, you have to understand how to listen by the spirit. So that's the first thing. Because they were often tripped up by Jesus' words. So I also don't walk around trying to patty cake to the babies. One, you shouldn't be listening to me. <laughs> so that that's the first thing, right? Like. You have, a, you have a pastor, you have a teacher for those kind of things. Now, I was expressing that in light of some of those things because it says that in him is no shadow of darkness or no variation. But then it also begins to speak about prior to that how he is the father of all lights. Yes. He's the father of all lights. In him is no shadow or no variations of darkness. Right? In him is no evil, all of those things. But then in the same token and in the same regards, it says that he himself hides himself in thick darkness. He himself dwells in clouds of darkness. I like So the difference is, I understand what you're saying, but I don't discount one for the other. I just choose to allow the light of God to shine and I take the whole counsel of God. You see the difference? So I don't discount one for the other. I just choose to let the light shine and I receive the whole counsel of God. It's not if... Or it's both. You understand? Yes. It's not if or. It's actually both. I love you. Playing us every time. <laughs> Hold on one second. Julie said that was early. Yeah, yeah. Elijah tapped out early tonight. I don't think he took a nap today though. So <laughs> if he didn't take a nap, so yeah, it's not either or, it's both. Or a, a better word than both, it's all. It's all. So it's everything. It's not just one or the other. I was talking with someone today. They sent me a voice note. They said, "Hey man, I'm trying to understand." They're a big influencer, and so they were like, "Hey, now that I'm." He already deals with other influencers. Be like, I kind of got jammed up because they were asking me about once saved, always saved. And I didn't, you know, he's new to the faith, but he's a very wise man. So he said, I didn't even know that was a thing. Is that like a thing? As he was telling me some of the conversation they were saying and some of the scriptures they were using. And he was telling me, he's like, yeah, because you know, I was taken back because they started mentioning Saul in the Old Testament and then mentioning um, something else and something else. And I listened. I and I just sent him a message. I said, well, one, everything they told you is wrong. So let's just start there. Then two, it's not if or, it's all. So no a man cannot lose his salvation. You can't lose your salvation. You can walk away from your salvation. But that's a conscious decision. You don't, a loss is something that's misplaced is what that means. You don't misplace your salvation. You walk away. It says that no man can take us out of the grasp of his hands. Right? It says that those who are in his hand, no one takes him out. So if no one can take him out, that means no one means no one. Yes. But that means that you can remove yourself from there. Paul talked about that. There are those who have tasted of the heavenly powers to come. If they are to walk away, it is impossible for them to be restored unto this again. 
So a lot of times people take that and they mix it up. When he says that there are heavenly powers to come, most people haven't tasted of the heavenly powers to come. So you're not, when he talks about the heavenly powers to come, he's not talking about the guy who's just brand new to discipleship and just, and just starting in the, no, he said the heavenly powers will try to come. Yeah. If you can't name the heavenly powers to come, you don't even know what they are. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm telling you now, deliverance is not one of them. Prophecy is not one of them. Healing is not one of them. Because mm-hmm. everybody's like, oh, well, they healed in it. None of those are part of the heavenly powers to come because there is no healing in heaven. There is no prophecy in heaven. The only prophecy that exists in heaven are within the books that proclaim the futures to be. But there is no healing in heaven. There is no deliverance in heaven because every man is already whole. So those are not a part of the heavenly powers to come. You see what I'm saying? Yes. It's not if or, it's all. So I was just telling him, I said, listen, man, run quickly away from all the people you're talking to. <laughs> okay? Because all of them sound like they come into you and or you coming to them and I said, what did I tell you? You're not going to someone to read the Bible. He came for experience. You see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yes. Excellent. So like I said, spiritual things can only be taught by experience. Now knowing that the tree of life cannot be taught in its full entirety. It can be taught. Because remember to every scripture, to the entire thing, they are layers of revelation inside of it. Layers of light. Now, mind you, I don't say layers of light going this way. So are the powers, the heavenly powers to come at each beings? No. When the word of God says that there are, in Colossians, it talks about whether that be thrones, dominions, powers, principalities, rulers, Just put it like this. The, the power beings, their dwelling place isn't even what you think. Remember, remember these things are by experience, like you can't read about it. But the beings that are what we call powers, they have a certain purpose that they work unto. And their purpose isn't served or fulfilled inside of heaven. So those also are not the powers, the heavenly powers of the age to come. <laughs> and part of that too I could easily explain I could easily answer that question right Paul said what we became stewards of the mysteries of God what God made me was he gave me a, remember I told you I said I carry a key yes. Yes. it's always in my hand only God can open your eyes to see it though just as much as I carry a bag that's full of light I carry this key part of that key is the stewardship to unlock it when it's time I'm not allowed to unlock things to people that are not ready for it. And that's not a jab on Brando. I'm not speaking about any one person. I'm just using that as an example. If I start teaching you about what the powers are, what they're actually doing, you're not ready, you will be jacked up. Jacked up. Because you got access to something that you weren't ready for. It can destroy you. Your spirit isn't even to the capacity to house it yet. That's why I said one day we're going to do a school of angels and I can, God will get a grace. And I promise you it's going to be like four days because it takes time to take somebody from Genesis and really unpack all the stuff that's not written. Yes. So even as being a steward of the mysteries of God, part of stewardship is, or custodian is a better word, when is it time to open and unveil these things? Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. So sometimes if I don't answer a question, I'm telling you why I'm doing it. My son will tell you that sometimes he'll ask questions and I tell him it's not, you're not ready yet. But I can speak more plainly to him like that. But it's not ready in a sense of heart's desire. It's ready as, is your spiritual capacity housed to the point that you can sustain the truth that gets put into you? Mm-hmm. Because if not, it can corrupt you. Mm-hmm. If not, if I unleash it to you, it can literally corrupt you. It can literally corrupt you. That's what they said about Satan. You, you corrupted your own wisdom by the reason of your brightness or by the reason of your beauty. He began to receive information and it corrupted him internally. He said, you, you corrupted yourself by reason of your brightness or by reason of your beauty. 
So as much as we desire light, light has to be dispersed all in the right increments. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. They didn't know I I know how to take the steps with people. <laughs> That's too deep. No, man, I, I, trust me. I promise you, if you think the stuff I teach is deep now, you don't have a clue. The stuff I talked to John about in private. Yeah. I was talking with, um, I was Shonda with message and she was asking me about one of the saints. And I, I said, I said, those are conversations that I only reserve for in person. Those are conversations I only reserve for in person. I said, but as God continues to allow us to walk together, we'll have much more time together in person. As God continues to allow us to be together and walk together, that's why it's important to when they say get in the room. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube, are y'all good? I know we I know we just getting started. I'm just I'm trying to get myself to feel better. John, let's get a. I'm how you help me read just to help me help me trudge through these these feelings. Let's start with um Genesis three. Psalm verse one. Um, actually, what what's the end of Genesis two say for me? I'm texting somebody real quick. They said uh. He's talking about um <laughs> I just saw y'all text message with Julie. <laughs> y'all play too much. Go ahead. They Go said ahead. Uh, they were both naked and the man and his women. Yeah, were but they were the shame. Yes. So God planted a God back God planted a garden east with it eating and put it into it. And there it is. Shame. Okay, yeah. Go ahead. Let's start there. Is that verse? Yeah, I'm just gonna just we'll bounce around. Genesis chapter 2, starting verse 25. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is not which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant, pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make, make one wise. wise. Yep. She took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave it to her husband with her, he and he ate. ate. Then the That's eyes of both of them were open, yes. and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves coverings. Mm -hmm. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the lord god among the trees of the garden then the lord god called to adam and said to him where are you so he said i heard your voice in the garden and i was afraid because i was naked and i hid myself and he said who told you that you were you naked see, that's not quite a full truth there because Adam was no longer naked, he covered himself. Adam had already made fig leaves and covered himself. He was hiding because of the information that he received. Now this, we're gonna start, I'm gonna start breaking this down for you. Go back to where you started and let's just walk through this. But while he's finding that, Adam saw that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves and coverings for themselves. And then they hid. But they were already covered when they hit. So there's more than what's at play. It's kind of like when you read Revelation, a lot of times people make Revelation this scary book. Revelation is a book of prophecy. So it takes a prophetic spirit to understand it. 
You see, it takes the spirit of a prophet to understand that it's not just that you read Revelation and you're scared. No, you should be scared. Fear God. Fear the one who can destroy the body and the soul. Yes. Right? Fear God. However, what I'm in addition to, remember, I said not if or it's all. In light of it being all, Revelation is a book of prophecy. It's a prophetic book. And it takes a prophetic spirit to understand it. That's why you ever, I'm just so confused. And trust me, I understand why. <laughs> the moment I hear somebody talk about how confused they are, they're already, they're already telling on themselves. No, all you got to do is ask God for wisdom. To he who has wisdom, to him will be given understanding. You ask God for wisdom, he gives you understanding. All right, go ahead. And they both was naked. No, no, no. Go. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, you're right. You started in it too. Yes. <clears throat> they both, they were both naked, mm -hmm. the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Now Satan here is poking for information. Because a lot of times we ascribe too much credit to the enemy. He's not all-knowing like we like to think. He's not all-knowing like we think. He has an idea of a whereabout in light of this tree, yet he does not know which tree it is. You see? Yes. You're talking about the one who dwelt in the heavens, yet he himself does not understand which tree is the tree that they can't partake of. Wow. So if you have someone who dwelt amongst the heavens and has seen those powers, those lights, those true facets of that dimension, and he doesn't understand... You shouldn't speak so hastily about what you do not know. Why? Because there's things that you can see, but you may not understand. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So Satan's not all-knowing. But yet we like to ascribe him as if he is all-knowing. That's like the whole adage where everyone was coming against all of these prophets who were prophesying in a certain way. And it's like, oh, that's a familiar spirit. First of all, the enemy doesn't know everything. He does not know everything. That's why... Corinthians, when Paul lays out the prophetic grace that he received, he says that when a man comes in and he and he's amongst the meeting, if you prophesy in this manner, the secrets of the heart are revealed and then he will know that surely God is amongst them. So secrets of the heart being revealed prove God is with you, not a familiar spirit. Wow. You see that? Yes. That's first Corinthians. That's the prophetic seed book. If you want to be prophetic, read that book. It's not just about reading Corinthians. There's grace that comes with experience. Paul experienced something, which is why he could set in order certain prophetic foundations. You understand what I'm saying? Remember I said, you can only teach by experience, not by what you study. Paul didn't go away to Arabia to study. Paul was already studied before he left. Paul went because the study wasn't relevant anymore. He needed experience. All of his study led him to killing Christians. So clearly what he was reading was not enough. You have to have experience. And in his experience, when God draws him away, when he comes back, we don't have any ounce of prophetic order until Paul starts talking about it. You see? Yes. Paul is telling us, if the secrets of the heart be revealed, that man will say, surely God is with them. He won't say a familiar spirit is with them. He won't say the devil is with them. He will say God is with them. You understand? Because when the woman... Who had the familiar spirit or the spirit of divination? I talked to you about divination, familiar spirits, all those things. When she talked about Paul and them, said, "Oh, these men, proclaim, these men shall proclaim the way of the Most High God, proclaim the way of truth, so forth and so on." That's not a secret of the heart being revealed. Mm -hmm. That's a given. Everybody knew Paul was proclaiming the way of the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> There's a certain portion of it that she was accessing. That's like, okay, yes, this is forth telling, but the depth of it. Is not the same as bearing the secrets of the heart. Secrets of the heart only God knows. Amen. Understand what I'm saying? Secrets of the heart only God knows. 
Secrets of the heart can only be accessed by those who are serving unto God. I know that may sound strange. I know it will. But I'm telling you, there's certain things that can be said and only God can reveal them. Amen? Amen. All right. So I said to say Satan doesn't know everything. No, even in Satan not knowing everything, he has a general awareness. So the enemy has a general awareness, but you have to cooperate in order for him to find the, hit, find the mark. You see what I'm saying? Yes. You have to cooperate in order for him to find the mark. So as he begins to question Eve in light of which tree did he say you can't eat from? Which tree did he say you can't eat from? He starts pride and he starts poking. Go ahead. Then the serpent said to the woman. So then the serpent said to the woman. What did he say? You will not surely die. You will not surely die. So first of all, how does the serpent talk? Animals don't speak in the same measure that we speak. We know they don't speak in the same measure that we speak because when Balaam is on the way and, he ain't, and trying to curse the people of God, when the angel of the Lord stands in the way to block him and then he doesn't even see the angel of the Lord, the donkey sees him and the donkey stops. And then as he begins to strike his donkey, the donkey then in turn says, why would you do this to me seeing as though how I have been served you, how I have treated you? He took an unnatural form of speaking to speak back to his master. So it's not natural for them to speak in that manner. You understand what I'm saying? So when it said that and the serpent spoke to her, it's more at play than what you're just reading. Now, the reason you have to understand that it's more at play because this isn't just a snake that she's having a conversation with. As much as we would like to, in your Sunday school and in your book is going to tell you it's a snake. It's a snake personified. She's having a conversation with a man. I know that's going to be hard for people to process. That's why spiritual things can only be taught by experience. She's having a conversation with a being. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. She's, you okay? She's having a conversation with an entity. This isn't just that there's a snake that's wrapped up on a tree and he's sitting there talking to her. That's how the pictures make it look. It looks nothing like that. She's having a conversation with a, da a dazzling one or a brilliant one. Remember I told you when Satan or Lucifer manifests himself, he manifests himself in such a way with such light that it can be captivating in such a way that most people can be deceived. Most people can be deceived. And the reason being because of how brilliant it is. But if you've never experienced true light, you don't know false light. That's why it says that he can manifest himself as an angel of light. You see? So you have to have the inward man fully charged and fully alert to be able to discern what type of light it is. That's why discernment is necessary. The ability to discern, having our, ex our spiritual exercises, our spiritual senses discern that we may exercise the ability to discern that which is clean and unclean, pure and unpure, holy and profane. You see what I'm saying? Yes. This is an entity that she's having a conversation with. This, that's a, where you get that from? That's unique. I've never seen that kind. No, no, no. It just, I'm saying it can. I've never seen one like that. That's a new version. Which is that? It's a new one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've never seen that. That's dope. You mentioned before that if he personified it, he's most. Yes, that's absolutely right. This is why she's able to have a conversation. It isn't that she's talking to a snake. Now, most people would try to, because. Remember, Revelation, like I told you, is a prophetic book. So it uses types and, and pictures and imagery and things like that. Remember I told you when God told me that I was a tree? It wasn't that I was a tree. It's that I was a prophet. I was his prophet. You see? But if I were to walk around thought I was a tree, I'd, I'd turn into some foolish man outside trying to plant myself. You see what I'm saying? He told me I was his tree. I was his prophet. That's how he taught me about prophets are trees. Mm -hmm. 
And then he explained to me Enoch and Elijah. These two trees. And explained to me, this is how prophets are trees. So my experience, he would teach me and then give me this when it's time for me to teach it. That makes sense? So if I took the same imagery, like, oh, it's a snake speaking. When God told me I was a tree, it wasn't that I was a physical tree. It was an image of something. So if people want to take hold to him being a snake, it says that in that day, I saw the great dragon fall, not a snake fall. So if the great dragon fell, it would have said, if it was just that, that it was the physical dragon, it'd be she was having a conversation with a dragon because he was cast down to the earth before she was formed. You see what I'm saying? Remember, these things are prophetic. You can't read it with a carnal understanding. It doesn't work that way. So Eve is having a literal conversation with a being, not just a snake. It's a snake personified. Go ahead. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So that's how the enemy gets you. Half truth. The enemy can never capture you with a full on lie. They have to wrap it in so much truth that you can digest it. So he says, in the day that you eat, you will surely not die. But you will be like him, knowing the difference between good and evil. Part of what he said was correct. correct, wow. Or part of what he said was a lie, but no. because No, because God says, surely you will die. Surely means surely. God's not missing his words here. So God said, hey, on the day you eat this, you shall surely die. Satan says, you won't die. God, you would just be like him, knowing the difference between good and evil. So it's a half lie, which is all, or a half truth, which is a full lie. <laughs> you got it? Yeah. All right, go ahead. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, mm. and a tree desirable to make one wise. So when the woman did what? What she saw. Remember I said, what you listen to determines how you see. Yes. What you listen to determines how you move. What you listen to determines how you act. That tree been there a long time, and at no point in time did she see it, and was it desirable to her? The tree that she knew she couldn't partake of, at no point in time did she look at it and say, man, that tree is desirable to make one wise. Mm -hmm. Yet, when he begins to present things to her, it begins the inner workings of corruption. Yeah. That's why I say certain things have to be reserved and say, man, you're not ready for that. Mm -hmm. I really just don't say that all the time because I don't want to hurt people's feelings. Because they're like, oh, man. <laughs> But I'm probably going to start saying that here more often. Like, hey, man, you're just not ready for that yet. You know? And listen, let me tell you. If you just look, like, you really want, if you really want to get it, if you just love the Lord Jesus, if you just, I'm talking love him for him and him alone, for nothing else, he will want to unveil himself to you. His desires are greater for us than our desires are for him. That's the way the Lord taught me early on. I'm more willing to draw near to my people than they are to me. Draw near to me and I would draw near to you. That's a promise. That's not a perhaps if you draw near. I'll draw. No, those who draw near to me, I will draw near to them. Why well, God's desire has always been to be with us. So above all, what you want is the sweet fellowship of his Holy Spirit. And that can only be found through prayer. So a lot of times when people are looking for things, I'm like, man, are you, you don't even pray enough. And not pray enough like there's a time clock, like, oh, you punch the clock. But no, meaning pray enough in the sense of your desires aren't even there yet. What you're looking for is intellect. It's just spiritual. You're just looking for spiritual intellect. But intellect is still intellect. If I tell you spiritual things, but you don't have the grace with it, you still won't be able to be function, functional. You see what I'm saying? Yes. You still won't be able to be functional. If I tell you about the powers, it does no good if your spirit hasn't grown to the point that it can handle the capacity of what to do with them. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So what I'm, I'm just kind of stopping here so I could say this. What's more important is that you love God. What's more important is that you just love Jesus. 
and that you love him deeply and that you love him affectionately and you love him lavishly. That alone will cause him to draw near to you. That alone brings his insight. That alone brings his wisdom. That alone brings his light. When I tell you I'm a byproduct of just a guy who loves to worship God, that's what I, I'm a byproduct of a man who just, you know, we're working on a book and it's called Prayers of a Simple Man. I'm telling you, if people could understand the simplicity, like everything that's complex has its building blocks in that which is simple. So when the Lord began to teach me things, he would teach me language in a way that I could understand. So it, that's why he didn't teach me the scriptures. He taught me in a way that I could understand. That's one way he taught me. My son, everything that is everything that is complex has its foundation or his building blocks is the way he taught me, my son. Everything that is complex has his building blocks in that which is simple. And then he taught me about the simplicity of the gospel and the simplicity of breaking bread and prayers of the saints. And I did that for years. Simplicity. Simplicity. So now my building blocks were so stable that when he began to teach me about the powers, about the thrones, about the dominions, it doesn't corrupt me. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't damage me. It doesn't in turn cause me to look to other things. Because that's what happens for a lot of people. I've seen it happen with prophets. I've seen it. All of a sudden, and I'm the guy that I'm the guy that understands spiritual like spiritual things. I'm the guy that won't call somebody which and even then I've seen people just that line is so thin. And if the Lord Jesus isn't your focus, you will find yourself on the wrong side of that line. I said, Brother Wilson, I don't mean to sidetrack you. Well, you already did, <laughs> but that's okay. okay. I'll track you. You can answer this later, but when can we get your full testimony? Anybody that's been with me knows my testimony. I'm a man that God found. And when God found me, I gave my all to him. And from there, he put me into his service. Now, there's more inner workings to it. But that's not what we're here for tonight. <laughs> You're not going to incriminate me on camera. <laughs> it's the thing called statute of limitations. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> you, gotta, you, gotta, you come to a meeting in person, I'll give you every, all of my testimony that you want to know. He said that corruption is that what happened to William Brandon William no catch uh, I don't even know how to address you what's your name catch XX22 <laughs> yeah man I, I'll be more than willing to share that with you though I don't have a problem with that but the, the gist of it is when God found me he saved me notice the language that I'm saying when God found me how I speak I'm, I'm telling you something if you just listen when God found me, he saved me. Then he cleaned me and he charged me and put me into his service. That's, that's it. And I've been living for him ever since. But I plead the fifth. I took my gun off before I started teaching so it wouldn't be jammed up in the chair. But just let me just say like this. I ain't the rodeo you want to ride. <laughs> I'm going to pick back up He done made me lose my train of thought <laughs> Then The eyes of both Then Hold on So when the woman saw that the tree Was good for food That it was pleasant to the eyes And a tree Desirable to make one wise she took of his fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open. So the enemy says that to her. She takes of it and she eats. Then she gives to her husband, and he partakes. And then the eyes of both of them are opened. Now God gave the instruction to Adam. He never gave the instruction to Eve. It was the man's duty to lead and 
rule. That's a word people don't like. It was his duty to lead and to rule her. Now, when I say rule, it doesn't mean dominate. So don't take that and then be just talking to your wife crazy in the house and all kind of other stuff because that ain't it either. But it was his job to rule. But I don't know why people got a problem with rule. They said that husbands rule your house as well. It talks about the man, if he's qualified to be an elder, he will rule his house. The man who's qualified to be a bishop, he will rule his house. The man who's qualified to be an elder or deacon, excuse me, he will rule his house. Does that make sense? So ruling is not a it's not a bad thing like what people like to think. We don't dominate. We don't manipulate. Okay? Now, I'm not going to say what I want to say right now. But, y'all just hold on a second. Mute my microphone. <laughs> Get myself together. Uh, go ahead, John. What we, so she gives to him, and then the eyes of both of them are opened. The eyes of both of them are opened. The eyes of both of them are opened. But her eyes are not opened until he partakes. So even then, sometimes when it comes to open spiritual eyes, it takes a covering to make it happen. I'm not messing with y'all. I'm not doing this with y'all. <laughs> I'm not doing this with y'all. Let me put my phone on. Do not disturb. Hold on. Y'all were supposed to stop though. Hold on. Now, her eyes are open based upon his eyes being open. But if his eyes are never open, her eyes would never be open. If his eyes are never open, she would have never saw anything. Because God gave the instruction to Adam, not to Eve. This is why Eve was deceived, not Adam. Yes, patience. Eve's eyes were never open to see her nakedness until Adam partook of the fruit. In Adam's partaking, her eyes become opened. Now, Eve was the one who was deceived. Adam made a conscious decision to rebel. And rebel is a strong word, but there's more at play even with that. Adam made a conscious decision that I will partake of this. But Eve was deceived. Does that make sense? Yes. Eve is the one that is deceived, not Adam. Because Adam has been walking with God. But even though Adam is walking with God, I want you to understand something. When God formed Adam, because Adam wasn't born, Adam was formed. It's a big difference. Adam was the first formed man, but he wasn't the first born man. But he was formed, he was shaped. Eve also coming from him, she wasn't born, she was fashioned, she was shaped. So because they're born, they're fashioned and they're shaped, these were adult beings with childlike understanding. 
Adult beings, childlike understanding. A lot of people who ask questions about deep spiritual things very much are adult beings, childlike understanding. Mm. Adult beings, childlike understanding. Now what, remember I said, the more light you have, the more you can understand all the things that aren't expressly written. Every day God will come to be with Adam. And every day that God will come to be with Adam, God would feed Adam. And when God would also feed Adam, God would teach Adam. And this is where Adam began to grow and mature and to learn. But remember, Adam was a born, spe a formed species that knew nothing. So every day God would teach him, okay, this is this. This is how you do this. This is this. This is how you do this. One day you're going to leave here. This is what you're going to do. You are going to do this part. This how Adam was getting all of the baseline instructions so he could rule the cosmos. As man meaning dominion, not Adam as a person, but meaning man. Because he created man to have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the fowl, over every creeping thing, over all the cattle, or all the cattle upon the earth, over every creeping thing on the earth. You see what I'm saying? So Adam is learning every day with God. Adam is receiving every day with God. Now, when it comes to the deception, the deception is based upon Eve, not upon Adam. Because Adam knows more than Eve. Adam has more understanding to life, purpose, all of these things. You imagine you're formed, all of a sudden you look around, you don't even have a clue what you're doing here. That's a lot of people today. Don't have a clue what their purpose is. Purpose, excuse me. Don't have a clue what their purpose is. Don't have a clue why God would have them here. Don't have a clue what they should be doing. Don't have a clue what the next move is for them to do. And all it points to is that you're adult in stature, but you're not fully formed yet in understanding. And what you need is fellowship with his sweet Holy Spirit because there's the place that he can grow you. There's the place that he can mature you. Not just me telling you information. Me telling you information is a big part of that. But a bigger part, it's fellowship with his precious Holy Spirit. Every day he would come. Every day. So he would appear to him in the cool of the day. It was a meeting place. Not that it was just, oh, this cool thing to say. You know, he was telling him, we had daily communion. We had daily fellowship. This is where Adam would be fed bread from God. This is where he ate the bread of angels. It was every day in that cool of the day where God would come. The cherubims would be there also. So a lot of people don't know. There was heavy angelic activity and presence inside of the garden. Some of the cherubims, which are higher ranking, were also, were also responsible for teaching Adam certain things. This is also where Adam began to learn certain things of how to do and how to function certain ways. There were beings there that were teaching him these things. And then he would, okay, I can do this like this. I'll do this like this. So Adam was learning from God. Adam was learning by the virtue of what he was being fed. And Adam was also learning by the cherubims that were there present also. So most people don't, aren't aware of that. There were plenty of cherubims there present amongst that garden. That is why Satan had the ability to come into the garden because he was a cherubim. So even though Satan was cast down, he never lost who he was as a being. When Satan was cast down as a cherubim, he was still a cherubim. When Satan was cast down as the anointed cherub, he's still an anointed cherub. Not that he's anointed, he can serve God. That's not what I'm saying. But you don't lose the anointing is what I'm saying. The anointing is something that is placed in you and it's there. It doesn't get stripped from you. It doesn't get taken from you. You don't lose your anointing. You know, you're going to lose your anointing. All that's just religious jargon from someone that hasn't had experience. You can't even increase your anointing. Not just praying for a greater anointing. You don't get a greater anointing. You get greater grace. Amen. But we know what people are trying to say, so we don't have to be like, no, there's no such thing. So don't go saying there's no greater anointing. Okay? <laughs> 
Because the Saints love to beat people up when they say something wrong. That ain't what I'm saying. What I'm, you ain't got to go challenge people when they say that. Because people are going to be praying. I just pray for a greater anointing. You know what they're trying to say. Remember, it's about the heart. What's said in the heart. They're trying to say, I want to have greater capacity or greater grace. That's what they're trying to say. Amen. So that's why Satan has an access point. That's why Satan also has an access point when it says that, and then God was gathered with the sons of men, and then Satan came and said, oh, where are you coming from? Oh, you know, I've been walking to and fro on the earth. That also lets you know that their meeting place wasn't in heaven. Where are you coming from? Oh, you know, I've been walking to and fro about on this earth. You'll catch that later. Now, pick back up with... Uh, Cause she saw her eyes were open. That's what she was. At. That's where we we're at. Then, the eyes of both of them were open, mm -hmm. and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God. Among the trees of the garden. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice now in let the me garden. Tell you, let me tell you something. Do the contrary in light of, can prophets be anointed? Can prophets A be anointed? Or can prophets be anointed? All prophets are anointed. They're anointed by God. And if they're not anointed by God, they're anointed by a prophet who is anointed by God. That's how it works. All prophets are anointed by God or they're a prophet who is anointed by God. Does that make sense? Samuel was anointed by God. Although Eli raised him up, God was the one who anointed him. Samuel was the one who anointed David. Samuel was the one who anointed Saul. So you have a prophet that was anointed by God, yet you also have that same prophet anointing other prophets. That's how it works. You have prophets that are anointed by God, prophets that are anointed by prophets. Both are all anointed. So, crown of martyrs, I hope that makes sense for you. Where we leave off at? Say it again. What'd you say? Heard a voice in the garden. Yo, that's what I was going to tell you. So, although they're covered, their covering is not sufficient. Yet, rather than going to the one who can fix their issue, they run away from him. And this is what most people do in their fall. Rather than going to the one who can fix this, they go away from him. It's like what I tell my son, son, I can't help you if you don't come to me. I'm here to help you. may not seem that way, but I can promise you I am. But as long as you're going in the opposite direction, I can't help you. You see what I'm saying? That's why a lot of times our shame causes us to hide. Yet... He's the one that can remove our reproach. He's the one that can bear our shame, but we have to turn to him. So I'm pro turn to God for everything. Turn to him for help. Turn to him to remove your shame. Turn to him for your sin. I'm pro. He is the only one that can help with anything. So I choose to not run from him. I choose to run to him. That makes sense? All right. Go ahead. You can keep reading. So he said, I heard your voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Perfect. So it says, we heard the voice. We were scared. We hid ourselves, so forth, so on. And he says, well, why'd you do that? Because we saw that we were naked. Now, the first thing God does is he asks them, who told you you were naked? Not how did you find out you were naked? I mean, he didn't say, how did you know you were naked? Who told you you were naked? Who told you? Because what they told you affected how you see. And so in the same way, the tree that you eat from determines how you see. The tree that you eat from determines how you see. Remember I said God has created plenty of trees in the surf. You got to determine which one you're going to eat from. Because it determines how you see. He said, who told you you were naked? He wants to know, how did you gather that information? Who told it to you? 
Now, the other thing you have to understand is that there were other things that play inside of that garden. Who was it that spoke to him? Did Satan tell him? All Satan did was tell him, hey, listen, you'll be like God, and God don't want you to be that way. <laughs> was iniquity found in Adam before he decided to rebel like Satan? I'm going to come to that in a little bit because we, we go down Romans road with that. <laughs> Excuse me. Go ahead. Pick back up, John. You can cut it on. It's, it's fine. I don't, I don't mind the heater being on. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Mm -hmm. Have you eaten from the tree of which I have commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree. And I ate. No intercession. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, well, I'm going to tell you what. I didn't ask for her. You gave her. And so because you gave her, she did it. <laughs> and then she like, well, I ain't do it. The serpent did. Everybody rolling the blame. That's how we all do, right? Yeah. You're looking for someone to roll it off on. No intercession whatsoever. We got to grow in intercession also. Because love covers that's why the second Adam wouldn't roll the blame of his sin on us he would take it on himself Jesus. because love covers a multitude of sin that makes sense threw Eve right under that bus that's, that's why Jesus is a high priest who stands to make intercession for us and I'm telling you, I said, remember I said, it's about fellowship with his sweet, precious Holy Spirit. And now, obviously this could, the ruffles and feathers. I'm pro intercession. I'm pro you got to get in there and do the warfare, all of that stuff. But when a man grows in a certain depth with God, his intercession doesn't have to be from a place of struggle. His, inter his intercession goes from a place of conversation. God, would you be willing to help them? But that comes from a place of a man who loves God. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Now, I'm not saying you can't. Rabbi Shaka, Rabbi Shaka. You got, I, I'm for it. You know, I'm pro. Hey, yeah. Right. I'm pro. I'm pro. Let's go there. Right. But it is a certain dynamic where a man who has deep fellowship with his precious Holy Spirit, a man who loves God, a man whom God also loves to be with because it's not just enough for you to love God. Does God love to come and be with you? You understand what I'm saying? Does God love to come and be with you? Is the question. Because if God loves to come and be with you, you can make intercession from a place of fellowship. That's what God said with Abraham. Let us go to Sodom and Gomorrah, but let's start by passing through and see Abraham. Let's go tell him what we're going to do. That's a place of fellowship. And he says, that, Abraham, I'm going to go tear down Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot's over there. Would you destroy it if there's 50 righteous? No. But there's not. <laughs> well, what about if there's 40? No, but there's not. All the way down to what, five? Can, can we find five? <laughs> Listen, buddy, Lot the only one over there that's righteous, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but at no point in time is Abraham standing before God, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just... His intercession was from a place of friendship. His intercession was a place of, from a place of fellowship. His intercession was from a place of God wants to be with me just as much as I want to be with him. And so because of it, he's already bringing me the forewarning. Mm -hmm. And that's not a diss on intercession. I'm to do this pro and seed. You intercede until you grow into the place of fellowship. But I can tell you now, I don't do a lot of, Father, in the name of Jesus. No, I just love God. My prayer time is about me and him. Yes. And then the things that he wants me to intercede about. Amen. And those things we have conversations about. Lord, would you raise her up or would you? Is this, is this going to be the end or are you going to raise her up? Mm -hmm. This is how I... Help me understand, are you going to raise her up or are you going to keep her in this bed of affliction? Because I need to understand what to do. And then he can show me. This is what I'm going to do and this is why. 
So I'm not saying, okay, don't take my words and twist them and say, oh, he said he against intercession and he don't, everybody praying. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is there's levels to this. And everyone should be desiring to grow in intimacy and fellowship with the Lord Jesus. Abraham has such fellowship with the Lord that he would say, this is what I'm going to do, but let me at least tell you. You can't stop it, but let me tell you. You can't stop it, but let me at least tell you. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I spoke to him face to face like a man talks to a friend. Let me talk about Moses. Moses could stand before and intercede for the people. God, you should repent of this wicked heart, this evil. But I thought God wasn't even there, and him was no shadow of darkness. <laughs> yet he takes a tree with knowledge of good and evil that comes from heaven and he puts it in the earth mm. you don't know God no. you on. don't know God Come on. God put the tree there Period. and the tree came from heaven and is. there are things that are beyond the pay grade of entry level Christianity and the cost is fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Come on, throw that four ninety nine in here. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Fellowship with His pre- listen. I know we're supposed to talk about tree life, but all you all you got to do is find a way to just love the Lord Jesus. I tell you, I'm very ill equipped when it comes to comparing to other people. I got a lisp. I don't speak well. I don't have extravagant words like other people, but Jesus loves to be with me apparently for some reason. And I'm like, hey, I'm with it. I'm with it. He takes the, I was telling someone that I said, man, listen, he takes the foolish things of the world. He chose me. If you know it, it, I am a testament of that scripture. Him taking the foolish things to shame the wise. I am a testament to that scripture. He would take the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. I'm a testament of it. But I just love him. I just love him. That's all I really want people to get. Just love him. Yeah, we're going to get the revelation. We're going to get the light. We're going to get the insight. Because guess what? All of those things you need also. But not at the expense of not loving him. There's so many deep things I could teach you, all of which make you functional for your use to God. That's what I was telling my sister Adrian the other day. I said, look, there's things that we could talk about, but they don't bring salvation. They don't draw a man closer to God in a sense. Kind of like when he asked about the heavenly powers, right, or the powers. I could tell you about it, but nothing about that would draw you closer to God. Nothing about it. However, it will make you more functional in your service to God. So what God does is he gives you things that makes you more functional so he can now send people to you who need help. Right? Yes. So the level at which you know determines how many people you're also going to help. Is that better? The level at which you know determines the type, the type of people you're going to be helping. What, I, did, I didn't do it again? Well, get over it. <laughs> hey. <laughs> they prefer I talk like this to you yeah. guys. Yeah. <laughs> and it ain't happening. <laughs> they messed the flow up. What were we talking about? Yeah, but that wasn't what I was saying. I was going somewhere. Mm-hmm. I was going to tell you something, but either way, it's okay. But um, you have to. No. But 
I was telling her though, this now let's go back to Adrian. I was telling her though, these things don't necessarily bring salvation, but they make you more functional. And then when God makes a man functional, the reason he makes him functional is because he needs a lot of people that need help. Determine the book, yeah. It's all good. Fab's got to bring it back. But, um. No, I was, but I'm trying to get to what I was about to, um, I was about to say something that I wouldn't normally say. I was getting ready to give an example of something that doesn't bring salvation, but it makes you functional. Y'all can thank Felicia and Janika for that one. <laughs> It's all good. I'm just picking. It's all good. I got stuck. Pick back up where you left off. You better come back to me. <laughs> Kevin trying to incite it. <laughs> come on, let's go. Oh, uh, yeah. That, let me just get back into that. Then the man said, the woman who you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the, so the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go. So right there. Snake's already on their belly. So he was cursed to his belly, but snakes already exist on their belly. So this curse is proclaiming something else. That's why I'm telling you that it wasn't a snake and what we, how we think it was a snake. Because snakes are already subject to their bellies. That's the way it is. You understand? Now, Eve was the one who found herself in the place of deception, not Adam. That's what Timothy goes on to talk about. And how Eve was the one who was deceived. And then Paul later on went on to say, for this reason, women must have their head covered. Why? Because of the angels. So deception is easier for women than it is for men. Because of that, it's easier for women to fall under the stray or the sway of deception spiritually than it is for men. Doesn't mean men don't fall on it too because clearly life shows us. You got whole religions like Joseph Smith and the other guy got people drinking the Kool-Aid. These are men leading those movements. So don't get too strong, guys. <laughs> you know, they're like, yeah, yeah. No, we, we, all, we all subject. We're all subjected to this thing. Now, he had Jonestown. That was it. Now, in light of all of that, when we start talking about the tree, what you have to understand is that the tree that you eat from determines how you see. The tree that you partake of determines what you see. So it's what you see and it's how you see. And the reason is what you see and how you see is because we can see the same thing. That's the what we see. But how we see it is two different things. You see what I'm saying? Also, that's how we hear. We can hear the same thing. And you could be like, man, I heard this. It sounds like, um, is that word we've been using lately, Felicia? No. <laughs> right. <laughs> so <laughs> one could hear that and another one could not. But that's based upon the tree that they've been sitting under. The level of truth that you perceive is based upon where you've been sitting. The level of truth that you see is based upon where you've been sitting. Now, the, Julie trying to reel us back in. <laughs> now, in light of that, when you talk about this tree, it affected how they perceive. Now, I was teaching this to Angela, and I was telling her, I said, we don't truly understand what it means to receive 
fruit. Okay. The word of God says that test every spirit to see whether it is of God. And then it talks about for this reason, many false prophets have gone out into the world, so forth, so on. But when it says test the spirit to see whether they are of the reason you understand the test is because you have to know the information based upon the test. So I can't test you or excuse me, you can't test me on well, let me it's better for you. I can't test you on how to work in the corporate world. I don't know that world. I don't know the information on the test. It's kind of like Microsoft Excel. I don't have a clue how to operate it the way it's supposed to be operated. So you can give me the test all I want, but I will always fail because I don't understand the information necessary to make a proper assessment of this test. That's the same way spiritually. When it says, beloved, believe not every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are of God. If you don't know the qualifications and the criteria, you can't properly test it. That's like a first grader saying, yeah, I'm going to test my, my principal. You can't test them. You don't know what they know. You can't test them. That's like the fifth grader saying, I'm going to test the college professor. No, that's not how it works. He has a greater understanding. And because of his greater understanding of the things that should be, he can test you. So it says, beloved, believe not every spirit, but test the spirits. God was saying you should be at this place that you can test these spirits. But you don't understand how to deal with spirits. Because you're still thinking that it's just this whatever thing and you're trying to like, oh, man, well, you know, just save that for this and that and the other. No, beloved, believe not every spirit, but test the spirits. But if you don't know what you're supposed to be testing, you don't even know what to look for. All you think is, oh, if they say Jesus, that's, that ain't the test. I can promise you that. You understand? So, beloved, believe not every spirit, but test the spirit, see whatever God. Now, I was teaching Angela and I said, you can never partake of a tree. You get to partake of its fruit. At no point in time, you're like, man, this is a great apple tree. And you go bite the bark of the tree. That's how a lot of people sound spiritually when they're trying to tell this person is false, this person, this, this person. That's what you sound like. You sound like you're trying to bite a tree. You sound stupid. You, 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 see, you ever see someone, you ever see someone and they say, yeah, man, you got to test the fruit. The, the fruit, the fruit, the fruit. The fruit ain't what you look at. The fruit is what's produced. The fruit is the result. What is produced. And Jesus said that no good tree can bear bad fruit. No good tree can bear bad fruit. He didn't say no perfect tree. He said no good tree. Good and perfect are two different things. I'm good, but I'm not perfect. You understand? I'm good, but I'm not perfect. I can be perfected, but I'm not perfect. Okay. <laughs> Kevin's talking about that's mouth breather activity. <laughs> now, when you but when you consider it, says I was telling her, I said, when you partake of someone's fruit, it's not that you're partaking of them. So God made me a tree, but no one gets to come up and bite me. They get to partake of my fruit. Yeah, right. So yeah. if they partake of my fruit, what they're partaking of is the tree. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But you can't just go bite the tree. That's why they should have partook of the tree of life that was there. The tree of life is very much a picture of the Lord God and his son, the Lord Jesus. Because you cannot, no man has seen God and has ever seen, no man has seen God and can ever see God. But he, Jesus, the Christ, is the visible image of the invisible God. You hear me talk about the uncreated God. He is the visible image of the invisible God is what the scriptures say. He is the visible image of the invisible God. So is God visible? No. Invisible means that. Invisible. There's no extra revelation around it. There's no extra Greek, Hebrew. It, invisible means exactly that. Invisible. Jesus is the visible image of the invisible God. So inside of that garden, there's a tree of life. Life means source. Life means source. 
the same word that father means, not gender, source. The source of life is God, for in him is all life. That tree that is inside of the garden, they can't bite the tree, but they can partake of its fruit. And in partaking of its fruit, they can then receive life. You see? So when you look at the tree of life, the tree of life, the fruit, the expression of the tree is his son, the Lord Jesus. The tree itself is God. God is life. The expression of his life is found in his son. Does that make sense? So rather than grabbing the expression of his life, they gravitate to the expression of the knowledge of good and evil. And now corruption is entered in. But they always had the opportunity. God never withheld them from partaking of the tree of life. He told them, you can't partake of this tree. On the day you eat of this tree, surely you will die. God's intention was always as he was maturing Adam and as he was growing him and as he was raising him up, his intention was always to feed Adam from that tree. He says, no good thing will he withhold from you. God had no intention on withholding it from him. It's everything in his due time. That's why sometimes when people ask Christ, hey, man, it's, just, it's, not, it's not advantageous for the moment. But I don't have any intention on withholding it from you. I don't have any intention on withholding it from you. It's just not advantageous for the moment. So then God tells them, hey, look, because they've done this and have become like us, having now understanding of good and evil and they ejected him or evicted him for lack of better words and then they were removed from the garden now in them being removed remember Adam was learning all kind of things Adam was learning about what the world was before the world was this wasn't the first world it says by faith we understand that the worlds were framed worlds means plural worlds is plural Adam was learning a lot of things as he was walking with God. Why do you think that God went on to tell them, replenish the earth? You can only replenish what has already existed. Adam is the first man that we see, but God is telling him, go, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion over it. I know that's all over a lot of people's heads right now, but that's okay. You'll get it. You can only replenish what has already existed. So we got to go grocery shopping for the kids tomorrow. But I'm replenishing what already existed. The milk, the cereal, all that stuff. I'm replenishing what once was. It's not a fresh start. Do you think that a placenta from a newborn baby looks like a tree to remind us of the fall from spirit to earth? I've never considered. There's going to be so much more from the Father to the <coughs> life to come, and this is life. Shoot. <laughs> he didn't say plenish. He said replenish. <laughs> he said replenish. Yeah, consider it. He said replenish. You can only replenish what once was. That's why Revelation it says that woe to you inhabitants of the earth and of the sea because the great dragon has come down to you. But when the great dragon came down or when he was cast down, you and I as human creation were yet to exist. So he was telling you there's more at play than what man can see. Now, he said, Kevin said that we're going to spend a, a lifetime learning and God teaching us things. The fact is, a lot of us are going to spend a lot of time initially just becoming acquainted with things that we couldn't comprehend here. You don't think you get to reject deep things here and all of a sudden in heaven you get to see Jesus, do you? <laughs> it's not the way it works at all. At all. At all. Now, I'm, I'm going to say something. But I don't want somebody to take it the wrong way, so mute my microphone. Everyone else in Telegram, I'll tell y'all later.
would exist within this world that we teach and a lot of times will help prepare an entryway for the next life to come. Most people think they're going to meet the Lord Jesus. They're sadly mistaken. Sadly mistaken. Sadly, sadly, sadly mistaken. It takes a certain measure of light to receive him. Yeah, they're going to be in summer school. <laughs> no, they're going to be in summer school and night school. <laughs> I know, I've been both of them. <laughs> But yes, there are certain things, I just wish I could speak freely, but just trust me when I say there's so much more to God than what we know. God is a mystery, and the depths of him is so vast. You can't possibly, this is, you, always, you know, I always say this is what man knows about God. This right here is what man knows about God. Yet God is like the ocean. So even if God fills you to your capacity, there's so much more that you can't receive. Mm -hmm. But the difference is I'm aware of that. I'm not arrogant enough to assume, oh, man, I don't know. Mm -hmm. No, excuse me. No, I don't know. I'm not arrogant enough to assume, oh, I know. The humility is to say, man, I'm not certain. But there's so much more to God. God is a mystery. God is a deep mystery. But if you don't know, you don't know. It's kind of like Satan. Satan dwelled in different realms of light before he was even cast out. But God is a mystery, so he doesn't just lay things out openly for us to see. He's a mystery, and he has to be searched out. And as he's searched out, he then helps us find him. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, but God is the one who does, uses it to guiding and searching. So a lot of people can't even handle the process. The fact when I talk about, I, and I still haven't taught the message about the mercies of God, because I'm telling you now, it would piss a lot of people off. Because if I teach you about the mercies of God, I got to teach you about heaven. And a lot of people are going to be very confounded at some of the people they see there. A lot of people are going to be very confounded by some of the now saints who were not saints. <laughs> You should just focus on yourself. Focus on yourself. What is it if God pays this man at the end? Or what is it if he pays this man at the end of his life the same as what he paid me so long as I get what's due to me and he gets what's due to him? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm focused on my reward. God got rewards for every person's work. And at no point in time is he going to be like, okay, Felicia, I'm going to give you this, but so-and-so did this. No, he, he got a reward just for you and your work. And he has a reward just for me and my work. Does that make sense? Yes. So a lot of times we did things run deeper than what we understand. So even when I said Satan, the mercies of God, Satan was demoted multiple times before he ever got kicked out. <laughs> what? Keep your eyes on your plate. Keep your eyes on your plate. Yes. Satan was demoted multiple times before he was cast out. But if you don't know that, you would assume, oh man, Satan was this. First of all, people don't even know the depths of it. Satan was not a high ranking cherub. He wasn't. When it talks about Gabriel and Michael, they were part of the seven four spirits that stand before God. I'm never going to start naming them. Because then niggas go start going doing research. Yeah. Looking up stuff they ain't got no business looking up and then you all jacked up. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> yeah. Be caught up like Usher. <laughs> <laughs> Satan tried to get to Paletta and stare you in your face. Absolutely. And look what it cost him. John, find me um uh find me it's either gonna be an uh, Isaiah when it says that um and 
he walked back and forth amongst the coals. No, no, no. Actually, first find me Ezekiel. Ezekiel says that you were the anointed cherub. I think it's Ezekiel 28. Oh, that cherub, you were anointed. How you have fallen. Yeah, Ezekiel. YouTube, give me some thumbs up if y'all still with me. Yeah, go ahead. Read that for me, please. Tell them what you're reading. Ezekiel uh, chapter 28, starting verse 14. Mm -hmm. You were the anointed cherub who covers. Mm -hmm. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. Okay, so he says that you were the anointed cherub. You were among the holy hill of God. You walk back and forth amongst the fiery stones. Another translation for that is amongst the coals of God. The coals are there amongst the altar. The altar is before God. That's a higher realm of heaven. So remember, not all realms are the same. Heaven is in dimensions. Every dimension doesn't have an altar there. Okay? So, hold on. See, I'm about to take a little something. I'm about to take a placenta and calculation course. Huh? Oh, I'm like, what's that? <laughs> it's like, I don't know what. Okay. That must be a personal conversation. Oh, okay. I got you. Go ahead, keep reading. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within and you sinned therefore i cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of god all right perfect so he says i cast you out from the mountain of god as a profane thing but he says it was found in you by the multitude of your trading there's transactions that happen in heaven that people don't even understand he didn't say what he did was wrong but by the multitude and the way that you've been going about doing this, this has corrupted you. It says that his wisdom was corrupted by reason of his own brightness or by reason of his own beauty. That was based upon how he began to see. Now, I want you to find me the other scripture. That was Ezekiel? Yes. Find me Isaiah where Isaiah talks about how he was cast down and then men shall behold him, so forth and so on. You start Googling things, you say you find yourself in a trap. Don't, don't mess with Google. Like Janika and him say, you'd be caught up like Usher. I'm so caught up. As, uh, Pat put it in Isaiah 14. I don't know what it is. You got me tripping. That joint was fire. We're going to look at Isaiah chapter 14, starting verse 12. Thank you. How you are falling. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. Mm -hmm. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into the heaven. So he says, O Lucifer, how you have fallen, how you have been cut down. You have been cast into the earth. For Lucifer said within himself, I will ascend into the heavens. Well, is Lucifer in heaven or is he not? He's showing you there that these are realms and levels inside of heaven. He's telling you right here. Everything ain't what you think. There's levels. I told you before, there's levels and dimensions to this thing. He tell, the prophet sees it and understands. Says that you were cast out because you said in yourself, I will ascend into the heavens. And then what is he going to say? I will lift my throne. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. So Satan had a throne. And he said, I'm going to take my throne and I'm going to lift it. But when I lift it, I'm going to lift it amongst the stars, which means that Satan wasn't present amongst the stars. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Stars represent a certain ranking. That's what it, when it talks about the stars of God, it represents a certain rank. Wow. 
it represents a certain classification. That's why when they likened it, it says, and then I saw the great dragon with the, with his tail, he dragged a third of the stars. It's a classification of the type of beings who left with him. You see what I'm saying? He says, I will lift myself. Pat said the lowest heavens. No, Satan wasn't in the lowest heavens. He wasn't in the high heavens. Satan wasn't in the low heavens. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. He wasn't in the high heavens. That's why he said, I will exalt myself amongst the stars of God. But the passage that we read before tells us, he said, he was walking back amongst the throne. He was walking amongst the coals. He was amongst the altar. Satan once at one point in time dwelt in a higher realm than he did at that time when he was cast out. God extended mercy to him also. That's why I told you I said there's mercies that we, the understanding of mercies, trust me, we do not know. It's not an excuse to live any kind of way. Right? You should fear God and live like he's coming back tomorrow. <laughs> Work like he's never returning, live like he's coming tomorrow. Okay? Work like he's never returning. Live like he's coming tomorrow. But remember, all of it's found in his son, not by what you do. So even righteousness is found in his son, but his son affects what we do. <laughs> it's crazy how grand and mysterious our God is. He was in the highest realm, yet he did not understand it. No, Satan never existed in the highest realm. Seven, Satan never even came close to the highest realm. He never even came close. When you talk about the battle amongst Michael and him, it wasn't a fight like what you think. Michael put him out like this. We imagine it like there was this war. Like they were on one side and the other side like, charge! Kind of, but not really. He was vanished with like, boom, out of there. What you say? Mm hmm. That's probably how they did in Superbook. That's how they did it. They did it. Like, War! <laughs> so not, not quite. But no. So he, but he. I said it. Say he wasn't. He wasn't in the high heavens. He was. The, when I say high heavens, that's the high, the height of high heavens. The sevenfold spirits that are before God, they dwell in the high heavens. The elders that are amongst the council of God, they're in the high heavens. You see. Yes. Satan was never there. Satan was never there. Yet, even Michael had a certain measure of respect and said, listen, man, the Lord rebuke you. I'm not even going to come against the anointed. Like, you come against every other man of God. I'm just saying, you should, you should just probably get like heaven. <laughs> just a thought. Just... <laughs> But I'm saying that to say that there's levels inside of what people don't, they don't even understand the, the grace that God carries in light of that. But if you're going to ever, back to the tree, if you're going to partake of a tree, the only way you partake of a tree is by consuming this fruit. And only upon consuming a fruit can you gauge whether that fruit is good or bad. Okay. Now, obviously, there's a certain measure where naturally we understand to, gauge of fruit we can look at it and then we see like oh this banana spoiled etc and so forth so on right but the problem is you don't compare carnal things with carnal things you compare spiritual things with spiritual things yes okay that's why he who is spiritual judges all yet he is judged of no one yeah that whole thing give me revelation 22 we'll wrap up that way we can have some uh have some energy for wednesday Looking at Satan like Snoop Dogg looked at Jody on Baby Boy. This is Jody. You got to hit him with the one hit a quitter, Baby Boy. <laughs> you got it? Yeah. Now, before we go there, when God dismisses him from the garden, remember I've told you, well, at some point I, we talked about the, the destroyers. But that's what God put at the guard when he says that he put a flaming sword that turns about every which way. Yes. That's one of the facets of the destroyers. It's an angelic being. It's not 
that the angel had a sword. That's how it's taught typically. It's typically taught that, oh, and then God set the angel in a flaming sword of fire as if the angel is the one wielding the sword. But that's not what it is. And it's not even a sword. A sword is the best description what Moses had to write for what he saw. Remember, God showing him and then him writing based upon his understanding. So God prophetically can never speak to you beyond what you understand. So if you want to know why the depth of your prophetic is shallow is because you don't have enough understanding. Mm -hmm. You have to increase your capacity of understanding. God can never give you a name if you don't know how to spell. You see? I'm teaching you something if you just listen to what I'm saying. God can never give you a name if you don't know how to spell. Because God doesn't always give names like that. He gives pieces and expects you to put it together. But if you don't have wisdom, you don't have understanding. So in order to move in prophetic, you have to be wise because wisdom gives you understanding. You see? This is how we put together a prophetic when we minister to people. We say, okay, got it. This is what this is. But if you're shallow in understanding, it means you don't have no wisdom. So he who has gives wisdom, he will give him more understanding. So you have to ask our Father, give me wisdom that I may have understanding. You see what I'm saying? All right. Now, I was going to tell you something about the garden. I got it. So, the flaming sword is there and the angel is there. These are two different entities, both from God, but they're not the same thing. It's not that this, this cherub is wielding the sword. Now, the reason God placed the cherub there and the angel there and the flaming sword there is because Adam knew how to get there and Adam stood a chance of maybe gaining access if he doesn't put the flaming sword there. If he doesn't put the flaming sword there, Adam has a chance to gain access. And what he will gain access to is the tree of life. But God never intended for him to partake of the tree of life in the state in which he did. But Adam also felt deep remorse. These are things that aren't written. Adam felt deep remorse for what he had done. Yet Adam also was prophetically conscious of what he was doing. Adam was prophetically conscious of what he was doing. Remember I said no man has seen God. But his son is the visible image of the invisible God. So it says that they hear a voice walking in the garden. First of all, voices don't walk. He's teaching you something. I heard a voice walking. Who do you think he was talking to? The one who manifests himself, the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Remember I told you, I can teach you about when he came to teach you, my going forth is from old and from everlasting. From, my going forth has been from old and from everlasting to everlasting. Would you like to know? And I said, yes, Lord. He taught me the, from Genesis to Revelation, every place where he was. Now, Adam felt deep remorse for what he wanted, what he did, which is why God had to put him out. Because Adam also was fully aware of the future and the cost that would have to be paid for the action that was done. Just as much as he gave himself so he could keep his bride, Jesus gave himself so he could keep his bride. You see? But when it says that, he has become like us. We must put him out unless he take his hand and lay hold to the tree of life. Most people don't understand what that truly means. Put your thinking caps on, but don't try to think carnally. It says he would stretch his hand out and try to take hold of the tree of life. Jesus died how? Mute my microphone.
So we um, you got Revelation, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Let's do. Uh, let me let me go there also with you, John. Let me see where I want you to go. I don't even know what's going on, but y'all laugh just make it funny. <laughs> All right, let's do uh, let's do Revelation twenty two and start at verse one, and we'll just work through this real quick. Okay. And we'll talk we'll talk more about the tree of life, but there's a lot more. There's a lot more inside of this. Revelation chapter twenty two, starting on verse one. But as he reads, just consider what I'm saying. Your works aren't what get you into heaven. Jesus and what he has done affects what you do and that gives you a place before heaven. Now how you're seated and how you're ranked is based upon what you do. Okay? Your righteousness is not based upon what you do although it affects what you do which then becomes righteousness in addition to. Right? Because the word talks about he who is righteous does right, right? All of that. I get it. Brother James was like, hey, y'all. <laughs> but then a man with revelation comes and says, hey, man, it's grace. We will be chopping Paul upside his neck right now. But then Paul also gave us the insight that says, man, the spirit of grace will teach us to deny ungodliness, worldly lusts, and all of these other things. So remember I said it's not if or, it's all. Okay? Remember I said it's not if or or because the grace of God teaches us to deny ungodliness, yet the grace of God gives us a space for if a man falls. It's not if or, it's all. You need the whole counsel. Does that make sense? Okay, excellent. So go ahead. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, mm -hmm. clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. So, there's a water that's proceeding from the throne, it's clear as crystal, and it's proceeding from where? The throne of God and of the Lamb. And of the Lamb. So, this isn't three thrones, is it? Nope. He said it's proceeding from the throne of God and oh. of the Lamb. Oh. Remember I told you when men start talking, they say, oh, yeah, I saw the throne of the Holy Spirit, and I saw the throne of God, and I saw the you can. You need to just take that and be like, yeah, man. Good try. But the, you've been watching too much Superbook, and that was your own soul. Uh -huh. <laughs> Understand that God is like the ocean, and this is what you know. Mm -hmm. And only if you're willing to say, God, this is all that I know, can he fill you with his insight, with his wisdom, with his light. But if you go to God with all you know, you'll be the guy talking, but yeah, and I saw three thrones. Okay. Humility carries you a long way before heaven, by the way. Amen. All right, go ahead. In the middle of its street, and on every side, and on either side of the river, was the tree of life, mm -hmm. which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit. So the tree has how many fruits on it? 12. 12. That's a unique tree. That's a unique tree. Now here's where you get here's where you really do it. Remember I said that what is written is set. Yet there are pockets and there are holes that God wants to fill. But only if a man goes deep enough can he have access to it. If 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 we really want to play that game, ask us, okay, okay, genius. Tell me the twelve fruits on the tree. And it ain't gonna be what you think. Tell me, the 12, let's, tell me the 12 fruits on the fruit. And it's not that each month produces a different fruit. The tree produces fruit every month, but it's not that it's January is this, February is this, March is this, April is this. No. First of all, the calendar of heaven isn't built on our Gregorian American Roman calendar. Wow. You understand? Yeah. The time of heaven is not even built the same. Nothing is like our world. 
everything that we're reading is in comparison to our world because it's the only way we can understand it. Because it's the only way we can understand it. Remember, this is the book of prophecy. Remember I said, if you want to move in the prophetic, you need wisdom, which gives you understanding. This literally is in light of what we can understand inside of our world. I saw one like this, having eyes like this, having a horn like this. So when they say, oh man, what, you know what it says? He had hair. No, he has hair white like wool. He has feet burnished in bronze like brass. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like is a comparison language. The only thing that I've seen in my world to understand it is this. It's like this. It is like this. It is like this. So when you hear me teaching, I'm like, man, the best way I could describe it is like this. Every time I'm like, man, I, the only way I could describe it is like what we have in our world is like this here. Why? Because it's not the same. But I told you the sounds are not the same. The colors are not. The colors don't work like our colors. It's not the same. The sound doesn't work like our sound. It's not the same. So the best way we can describe it is like, it's like. He said Hebrew Israelites have entered the chat. <laughs> did I, let me see. What did I miss? Go, you keep reading, John. I'm going to look for what Kevin's at. In the middle of his street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there should be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Okay. So, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the land of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. This is a place of rank. Is what this is talking about. This isn't that a collective everybody gets there and good because everybody's not his servant. Everyone's not his servant. We would like to think that, but this is a designation of rank because everyone doesn't get to see him face to face. So prepare yourselves for that. Everyone does not get to see him face to face the way they think. They a lot of people think it's oh we're gonna just be before this sea of glad worship forever. No, that's a certain portion. Everyone doesn't get to be before him in that way. If you're not prepared here, you can't think you're going to be prepared there. Because what you know here will totally be scrambled when you get there. You see what I'm saying? There are angels that will help facilitate the process because everyone's understanding isn't the same. Everyone's understanding is not the same. And there shall be no more curse, and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. Not God giving people tattoos. <laughs> Imagine that. Or is it a spiritual marking that only a spiritual man can see? So then they want to call it witchcraft. Like, hey, man, I'm looking at this, and I see this. You don't know the way God marks a man. Cain, I'm setting this mark on you. That way, any man who sees you would know he can't touch you. He didn't put a brand on his head. He put a spiritual mark on him, and all of those men were spiritual. They didn't know, man, there's something different about we can't put our hands on him. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp, nor, nor light of the sun, for the Lord gives them light. For the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever then he said these words then he said to me these words are faithful and true and the lord god of the holy prophets sent his angels to show his servants the things which must shortly take place so prophets speak to angels if a prophet knows what's taking place the lord is telling them the way they find out is because he sends his angel to tell them but the moment we start talking one of the reasons I haven't talked much about the angelic is because if you start doing it, people don't understand it, and they immediately start attributing it to witchcraft. They immediately start attributing it to witchcraft. But he tells you right here, the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to signify to his servants, not his servant. He wasn't just talking about John. Servants is plural. 
of the holy prophets. That's plural. Yes. The Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to his servants. Now, angel is singular. He didn't say he sent his angels. All of us have spoken to a certain thing. That's all I'm saying. I'm looking for something. John, jump down to... Uh, jump down to 12 and read that. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me. To give to everyone according to his work. Yes. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments and that they may have the right to the tree of life. So a man does his commandments and gives him access to a certain place. Because the tree of life isn't inside of it doesn't manifest itself through all of the heavens the tree of life manifests itself where the rivers are but the one who does remember I said it doesn't affect you getting there but it affects how you will be there where you will be how you will reside blessed is he who keeps my commands because he will have access to the tree of life it's telling you the rank and where you will be hold on one second Listen to this. He who have an ear, let him hear. Oh, let me let me scroll back a few. To the angel of the church of Ephesus, right. These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not and found them to be liars. So remember I said you cannot test what you do not know. You can't give a test, yet you don't know the information on the test. You can't test apostles if you don't know the qualifications for apostles. And the qualifications aren't planting churches because when he called the 12 to himself and he named them apostles, they hadn't planted one church. They haven't been sent out nowhere. They hadn't done one lick of nothing except cast devils out, and they did that on the strength of his name. And he named them apostles. Not he called them. Naming and calling are two different things. You call something that shall be. You name something what it is. Jacob, you shall be called Israel. Where I come from, your name is called Israel. That's different from your name is. Abram, from today on, your name shall be Abraham. Because the name signifies what it can bring you into. So I know your works that you tested them who said they are apostles and you found that they are liars and you have preserved and have patience and have labored for my namesake and have not become weary. So we have to work for his namesake and not be weary in doing it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Remember I said I could teach till he returned. Why? I'm laboring and I'm not becoming weary because it's going to give me access to something. Nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have what? Fallen. Repent and do the first works or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. So when it says remember from where you have fallen, this is spiritual language here. I won't talk much about it because it could throw people off. But there's an old hymn and it says, love lifted me, love lifted me. They were telling you something spiritual. Love lifted me. But then he tell you, I know your love, but remember from where you have fallen. Mm -hmm. Repent and do the first works or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. But this I have that you hate the, the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. The tree of life is given by access based upon what you do. To he who overcomes, I will give him the right to eat from this tree. You got to earn the right to eat from it. We got to earn the right to eat from it. But if you think it's just enough, I'll oh, just accept Jesus. 
that's fine. But you're going to be shocked at how you dwell. You're going to be shocked at how you exist. You understand what I'm saying? These things are highly spiritual. Like I said, there's so much more. We'll, we'll, we'll have to teach this at another time. Again, where we can really just in person almost because there's so much that if you talk about it, people go, oh, that's witchcraft or that's different or that's this or that's that. And that's just not, it's just not the case. It just, you need experience. You got to taste it. You got to, you got to see it. You got to know what that tree looks like. That's, that's why we haven't made the tree logo because I can't find anybody to make it. That's, that's literally why I was like, Felicia, I need you to make a, a, a some with some letters because I tried to, I, we can't find, I can't find someone that knows how to make the tree and AI can't do it. The devil don't know everything. So there's that whether AI is good or not. <laughs> right? I'm just joking. Y'all. I was just kidding. Maybe. <laughs> what? Look. YouTube, y'all good? I know we had a little mute. We were talking about something, but anyone who'll see me in February, just ask me and I'll tell you. It's like coming to the cookout. You ain't bring nothing. <laughs> yeah. Anybody? Don't don't worry about it. And I I'll, I'll gladly talk about it in person. That mute wounded the soul. I promise you the only reason I muted it is because I know people watch my stuff and they cut it up in private. That's why. They cut it up and they send it to people in private and they listen to themselves in private and then they still take what I say they misinterpret it. So because of that, I had to mute that because that is something that... Trust me. That's such weird behavior. I, I, that's what I said. People are like, yeah, I heard this. Why are you weird for? Why you ain't this comment? <laughs> let me see how many. Let me see how many people we got in here. Hold on. So we got forty six. We got forty six people in forty eight. We got like the same faithful people commenting. Watch this. I'm gonna show you how to how to get rid of it. So let's do this. Let's give to God, and then we'll be right back, and I'll pray, and we'll say I'll say one more thing about the tree of life. Watch the numbers go down like. When I get that, I'ma flip that I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun Hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk My gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class Life is a test we pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun Hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk My gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class Life is a test we pass Yeah, yeah Pass on, will you not? Will you pass on what you got? When you pass on, does it stop? Or when you pass on, does it start? Yeah, those are the questions I'm asking. We live in the present, we look to the future, but we always refer to the past tense. Yeah, if I go make a million today, I wonder if that would be the reason why I got a big smile on my face. But I know yeah. that it will never last, I know that it will be a couple of days. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world as he's walking his path and turns around and realize that he just went the wrong way? I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk, my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk, my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass yeah.
God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun Hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together They call rap Raising my hands up in class Life is a test we pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun Hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together They call rap Raising my hands up in class Life is a test we pass Yeah, yeah Pass on, will you not? When you pass on what you got? When you pass on, does it stop? And when you pass on, does it start? Yeah, uh, those are the questions I'm asking. We live in the present, we live to the future, but we always refer to the past tense. Yeah, if I go make a milli today, I wonder if that would be the reason why I got a big smile on my face. But I know yeah. that it will never last, I know that it will be a couple of days. Cause what is it profit a man to gain the whole world as he's walking his path and turned around and realized that he just went the wrong way? I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass yeah. God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass Yeah, yeah Pass on, will you not? When you pass on what you got? When you pass on, does it stop? And when you pass on, does it start? Yeah, uh, those are the questions I'm asking. We live in the present, we look to the future, but we always refer to the past tense. Yeah, if I go make a million today, I wonder if that would be the reason why I got a big smile on my face. But I know yeah. that it will never last, I know that it will be a couple of days. What is it profit a man to gain the whole world as he's walking his path and turned around and realized that he just went the wrong way? I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass yeah. God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass Yeah, yeah Pass on, will you not? When you pass on what you got? When you pass on, does it stop? And when you pass on, does it start? Yeah, uh, those are the questions I'm asking. We live in the present.
past and we look to the future, but we always refer to the past tense. Yeah, if I go make a milli today, I wonder if that would be the reason why I got a big smile on my face. But I know yeah. that it will never last. I know that it will be a couple of days. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world as he's walking his path and turns around and realize that he just went the wrong way? I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some light sun, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap Raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass yeah. It's just me. That was such a great word from uh, Prophet Jason. You know, I don't know. It's, this is hard for me because I'm such a truth bearer and I'm very free and liberal with my truth, but or with the truth. Come on now. But we're going to... um. We're just going to wrap this up. I hope y'all are happy to see me. Y'all know how the saints be. They be expecting one person and then someone else come up for church that Sunday. Everyone be like, ah. Oh. <laughs> It'd be a whole letdown. But I pray that your, your spirits are blessed. Yes. Yes. I pray that everyone was blessed. That was such a, a great... Um, Word, and I think the essence of it all is just boiling down to boiling down to our our intimacy, our communion, our oneness with the Lord Jesus. Every time you come to this channel, for all of my people that are in the chat and a little bit in the in the shadows, that's okay, because there's light in the shadows. We bless you in the name of Jesus. We bless all of you in the name of Jesus, because obviously, when you come, you're partaking of the fruit. And may it cause you to multiply in Jesus' name. But it was such a good word because we need to be well with our intimacy and digging deep and, and coming in oneness with the Lord Jesus Christ. That is not just about information and it's just not about coming and, and seeing what's going on or even trying to partake or stir up strife and drama. It's really about our intimacy to the Lord Jesus and we say this in every teaching you hear between Jason and I and everyone else that will hit this channel look to the Lord Jesus and he will reveal the father to you that this is all about your love for him and his love for you first in return it causes you to love him and it, it causes you to go deeper. And the information and the fruit that you receive here from this channel aids you in your service to the Lord Jesus. He sets prof apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors. And may, I don't know if that was five, but you know, the fivefold. For the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. And then the grace of a prophet also, not either, not or, but in addition 
to the equipping for your hands on your plow, it equips you. He pulls the heart of the people back to the Lord Jesus. That is the, a part of the ministry of a prophet. So when you come here and you partake, please make sure that your hearts are well and that you understand and that you know that this is 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 cultivating you and and i mean we'll we always will get phone calls of people that say oh man i just want to like people just want to worship the lord they just want like oh my gosh how can it's just like you start to thirst for the presence of the lord jesus in your prayer time in your in 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 your daily in your daily life you have a yearning for closeness and oneness with him that's what this sparks in his people. And then in return, you also, because it's not either or, it is also that you're equipped for the work of the ministry so that you're not burnt out. That you're not burnt out but that you can come and drink and drink deeply and eat and partake. And the Lord Jesus adds and multiplies and adds and replenishes time and time and time again. Thank you, Lord, that you are the second Adam. He replenishes the fruit on the tree of Jason. So we're going to pray. We just thank you, Lord, for this time. Father God, we just ask you, Lord Jesus, that you would even replenish the fruit into J a Prophet Jason's account onto his tree, Lord, that you would nourish him, that you would provide waters for him to drink deep. Lord God, we bless you, Father God. We say blessed is Prophet Jason that comes in the name of the Lord so that we can see you, Lord, so that we can see you even more in our life. Lord, cause us to be able to perceive you in every facet, in every way, Lord God, that we will be propelled, that our relationship will go deeper and deeper, that our roots will grow deeper and deeper and deeper with you, Lord, that we will be like trees of righteousness, not of, of our own righteousness, but of your righteousness, that we will truly know the, the length, the width, the depth, Lord God, of your love and of your grace, that Jesus, we're so grateful we're so grateful that you are a man that is love, that you are a man that is mercy, that you are a man that is grace. And Lord God, we ask that we will become men and women of love, of grace and mercy. We bless you, Father God, for this time, Lord God. Let us come and, and, and Lord, cause us to know truly what your commands are. Cause us truly to understand how we can partake lord cause every person under the sound of my voice on this live even if they have left cause their lives to be elevated in light with you lord in love with you lord in revelation lord god we ask for wisdom so that our understanding will be increased i say lord let it be so for every last one of these ears that have have heard in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, wait, before we go, um, a few um, housekeeping for uh, School of Light. Woo -woo. We are so excited. We are so excited to have you all. We have some wonderful things that are being planned. We have wonderful um, people of God that are serving you all so um i just want to remind you all to tie up your loose ends um in in communications and babysitting and um in accommodations right um for those of you that are in the telegram group communicate with one another if someone needs some lodge or something like that look so, so you know y'all get with each other y'all figure it out but make sure that everything is communicated well and booked okay we are um, the the location is on the red line on um, the metro system in DC. 
um, and that is Silver Spring Station. There are also buses and everything that can get you there. But I will say Ubers are always a blessing, okay? Uber it up. It takes you to the, straight to the front door, so you don't have to worry about all of that. But um, we have provided some. Did we provide in the email? If you check the email at the bottom of the email, it's easy to miss it because it's under a picture. There are there's a whole list that wonderful An Anita has put together of places for you to look up for accommodations. And also check out Airbnb. The address to the location is in that email. So guys, 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 because I heard, you know, I, I be hearing conversations, you know. The little birds come back with the information. The information needed for everything pertaining to life and godliness is in that email that we sent out for School of Light. So just check it. Make sure you scroll all the way down on the bottom of this. Um, and oh, no, 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 no. Um, if you DM me or Jason, we'll make sure you get that email. What was his name again? He said it today. Josie. 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 Yes. Thank you. Okay, Josie. Brando, the same. If you are listening to me and you're like, I did not get an email, check your spam, check your junk mail, whatever those folders are. Um, type in school of light in your search bar in your in in your email in the different folders perhaps it comes up if it does not come up please send us personal text message or dms or something like that and we will forward it to you amen amen, amen. amen. or y'all brothers and sisters y'all see y'all know y'all know brando y'all got his information make sure he gets the email help help us out amen Y'all are blessed in Jesus' name. We love you guys. We will see you on Wednesday. God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some lights, son, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap I'm raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass God knows when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some lights, son, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap I'm raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass Yeah, yeah Pass on, will you not? When you pass on what you got? When you pass on, does it stop? And when you pass on, does it start? Yeah, those are the questions I'm asking. We live in the present, we live to the future, but we always refer to the past tense. Yeah, if I go make a million today, I wonder if that would be the reason why I got a big smile on my face. But I know yeah. that it will never last, I know that it will be a couple of bags. What is it profit a man to gain the whole world as he's walking his path and turns around and realize that he just went the wrong way? I'm the right one with some lights, son, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap I'm Raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass God knows yeah. when I get that, I'ma flip that, I'ma spend one gift too bad I'm the right one with some lights, son, hold me up, I do not care I often sing, I like to talk my gifts together, they call rap I'm Raising my hands up in class, life is a test we pass Yeah